forms of skeletal materials. There are three forms, three forms, three forms of skeletal. Three forms of skeletal materials, namely, one, we have chitin. 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 Some would do pronounce it as cheating, but CHI is chitin. Chitin your skeleton. Chitin is a skeletal material for most or arthropods. Two, cartilage. Cartilage. And then three, boom. So what are the three skeletal materials? One is chitin, two is cartilage, and then three is what? Is bone. We're going to look at these three skeletal materials and look at the examples of organisms that operate with these kinds of skeletal materials. Chitin is a skeletal material found in most arthropods. Skeletal material in most arthropods. Skeletal material in most arthropods. In most arthropods. Arthropods are class of invertebrates. Class of invertebrates. That is animals without backbone. This form of skeleton forms a basic encasement at the external parts of arthropods or invertebrates. The cut is a tough and elastic material. A tough, a tough, a tough and elastic. Elastic material. A tough and elastic material consisting of carbohydrates consisting of carbohydrates consisting of carbohydrates carbohydrates proteins proteins and minerals consisting of carbohydrates proteins and minerals. The chitin freely allow permeability of water because it basically comprises of carbohydrates which is being calcified, which protein calcified the carbohydrate through which is permeable for water I can allow the permeability of water. An example of organism with this type of skeleton is arthropods. Example of organism with this form of skeleton is arthropods such as crab. Such as crab. Crab belongs to a class of arthropods known as crustacean. Example crabs or prawn has this kind of skeleton. And then insects. Insects also has the skeleton of chitin. Uh, insects belong to the class of arthropods known as insecta. And then another organism with this form of skeleton is crustacea. Now we mentioned it before, crabs. Then arachnida. Arachnida. Example of an arachnida is scorpion. Scorpion also has this form of skeleton. This crab here is a class of arthropod known as crustacea. Sorry, I meant crustacea. So these are examples of organism with this form of skeleton. The skeleton is comprising of carbohydrates, proteins, and minerals. And the second form of skeletal material is cartilage. The cartilage. The cartilage, just like the chitin, is tough, flexible, and elastic. 
the cartilage is called is flexible flexible tough and elastic this is the feature of a cartilage a cartilage and the cartilage is a type of skeletal material found in mammals such as fish example of animal with this form of skeletal material is fish and mammals yes mammals where cartilage i've seen in mammals you can see cartilage in some parts of mammals like the ear and the other soft air where there is soft bones in mammals cartilage fish like cartilaginous fish or country stacks let's look at what cartilage comprises of cartilage comprises of a living cell comprises of a living cell known as chondroblasts 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 a living cell of cartilage is known as what the chondroblasts and then two the cartilage also comprises of carbohydrates carbohydrates and three the cartilage also comprises of fibrous proteins fibrous proteins so i repeat again the cartilage comprises of a living cell known as chondroblasts carbohydrates and their fibrous eh, protein it's doesn't cause it, it lacks minerals no minerals in this part of the skeletal material so it's just a living cell chondroblasts is a living cell of the cartilage carbohydrates and the fibrous protein the, cut, the coverage of fibrous protein gives this part of this skeletal material flexibility and the elasticity and then we look at the types of cartilage types of cartilage types types of cartilage there are three main types of cartilage three main types of cartilage namely we have the hyaline hyaline cartilage two we have the white white fibrous cartilage white fibrous cartilage and the yellow elastic cartilage students it's very well you know these types of cartilage and the location of this cartilage the allen cartilage is a form of cartilage that is found any point there is ending of bones or where bones, two bones, are meeting. The meeting point of two bones is where you see hyaline cartilage, like the shoulder bones, the humerus on the shoulder blade. There is a point where there is articulation of two bones, two bones, or the the humerus and another bones of the lower falling which is the honor i read you so the meeting point of two bones where two bones means there is a cartilage that's a soft bone that helps to cushion the effect or that serve as shock absorber between the two bones and preventing the two bones from friction is hyaline cartilage so any point where bones ends is where you see a hyaline cartilage in joints so call that this type of cartilage it's most likely found around joints or a point where two bones are meeting. And then the white fibrous cartilage, I think I've explained it in my subsequent video, that the white fibrous cartilage is basically found at the vertebra disc. The vertebra disc, which gives protection to the spinal cord. It's white fibrous cartilage. And then the last cartilage is yellow elastic cartilage, which is found around the epiglottis epiglottis trachea and eustachian tube
you most likely see this yellow elastic cartilage in the pig glottis. The pig glottis, trachea, trachea 2, and the eustachian, eustachian 2 of the ear. Okay, so these are the three main types of cartilage. Remember I told you that the cartilage comprises of a living cell known as chondroblast, a carbohydrate, and a protein that gives it flexibility, toughness, and elasticity. Now, I'll let you know to notice that uh, a chitinous skeleton of most arthropods is the reason why the size of insects, scorpions, or any arthropods, any organism that are arthropods, invertebrates, has limited size of body. The reason why insects doesn't grow beyond their size is due to the skeleton made up of chitin, which means that the skeleton at time to times are shedded out, shedded. The shed skeleton, shed. The process of insects shedding out their skeleton is called ecdysis. Ecdysis or or more thin. Or more thin. Most arthropods shed out or remove old skeleton as the skeleton is becoming worn out as the chitin is becoming worn out the skeleton is shedded out from the body giving rise to a new skeleton that limits the size of arthropod because of exodysis or molting what is molting or exodysis means shedding of old or worn out outer surface or skeleton or encasement as the case may be. I just record that quickly. That is for animal that has skeleton made up of chitin. And then we're going to be looking at the most important skeletal material which is the bone. The bone skeleton. The bone. The bone comprises of a living cell. A living cell known as the osteocytes, osteocytes, osteocytes is a living cell of bone, it also comprises of carbohydrates, 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 fibrous protein, Fibrous protein known as collagen. Fibrous protein known as collagen and minerals. Minerals, most especially is calcium, calcium carbonates, calcium carbonates and phosphates. These are the two major minerals of bones. So the bone comprises of living cells known as the osteocytes, carbohydrates, fibrous protein called collagens, and minerals such as calcium carbonates and then phosphates. There's what we know well, there's what we call ossification. Ossification. O C Ossification. Ossification has to do with the process of bone growth. Growth of bones is known as ossification. Ossification. Yes, bone grow due to minerals deposit like calcium, carbonate, and phosphates. Now you must take note of this. A cartilage can be converted to a bone. But a bone cannot be converted to cartilage because in adults, an adult, an average adult has about 206 bones, which is quite different from a bone of an infant. A bone of an infant or fetus is around 300. 
turn it bones for infants for infants has three hundred and eight bones for adults is two hundred and six bones. But during growth, some of the bones of infants fuse. Some of the bones, some of the cartilage, because what they have at that stage is most likely soft bones or cartilage. When they grow, these cartilages are ossified by calcium and minerals. And these bones started fusing. These cartilages started fusing to form bones. At that point, the bone returns from 306 in infants as they grow, and it will go down to what? 206 as an infant is growing into an adult. So the process of fusion or calcification or calcification or calcification of bones and leading to reduction of number of bones in infants to reconcile with what it is in adults is known as ossification. Studies have found out that have carried out some studies have said that ossification in boys is at 25 years. That means a boy stops growing once it has reached 25 years. At that point, all the bones that are needed to be fused are fused. So that means that is maturity is what a boy is going to be expecting now. And then in girls, it is quite different from that of boys. Ossification in girls is around 18 to 19 years. So the moment a girl has hit 19, 18 years, I think ossification stops. So these are the basic things you must know about the bones. The bones of infants is more than the bones of adults. Why are infants? They have many bones that have not fused, many soft bones that have not fused. So as they grow, the presence of proteins and minerals helps in the growth of bones. That means the bones started fusing and there will be a reduction of bone from 308 to 206 as an infant is growing into an adult. Okay. Thank you.